Hey, what's up, everybody? John Hammond here, coming back at you with level 22 of the Python Challenge. So we just finished up level 21. Here we are at the new link uh, based off of copper. That was kind of the passphrase to get to this level. So now we're greeted with this image of what looks like a joystick, kind of like a, a game controller. Uh, nothing else on the web page. So let's view the source. I control you here. Um, Regular HTML, nothing interesting. There's just the image here, level2.jpg, and an HTML comment that says, or maybe white.gif would be more bright. Huh, okay. Don't know what that means, but I'm assuming that it's referring to this image here. Uh, maybe we can just view a different image, view that white.gif. So I paste that into my browser here, and it just looks like a black box, <laughs> not a white GIF. Uh, I'm going to hit Control S to save this. I'm put it in the PyChallenge folder, create a new folder called Level 22, and then let's get a terminal open so we can actually start to work with this stuff. So moving to Level 22, do we have the white GIF? Okay, we actually have a white GIF image. Cool, this definitely is a GIF image. Let's do some regular reconnaissance on it. I'm going to run Exif tool. Um, just a white.gif, it's a GIF image, got the right version, image width and height is 200, 200. Um, animation iterations is infinite. Okay, so if I try to view this thing, I guess this is an animation, but I don't see anything. It just looks like a black box to me. Okay, <laughs> maybe we can use Python to find something valuable out of that. Um, let's try that right now, I guess. Let's see if we can get all the frames out of this thing. So let's open up a new script. I'll close everything that I've got right now. And we can get started again. User bin environment Python. And now I have to actually like save this thing. So Python 22 ape.py. And let's do this in Sublime Text 3, because I don't want Sublime Text 2 to freak out about the uh, the build view stuff. Okay, good. Sweet, now I have regular build. Okay, I'm going to be working with the pill, or the Python image library. I'm going to do that from pill import image, so I can go ahead and image.open white.gif. So I'll store it in an object I'll just call img. So if we wanted to, we can do img.show, and it displays it for us, 200, 200, but I want to see how many frames are in this thing. So img.nframes, and 133. Okay, so for frame in um, image.nframes, we want to range here because we're going to loop through them. So we can do image.seek frame number, and now the current image is just going to be, I'm pretty sure, a stale uh, a stale image. Let's find out. And then we can do image.save to, let's call this like frame d, dollar sign, or percent d, so we can get a format specifier, um, and format specify it with the frame number. And let's convert this to a string. So actually, I don't need to do that because I can just use the format string without having to have to create anything crazy. So now if I run this, do we have a bunch of more images in here? We do. OK. So we can look at all of these frames.png, like frame 0.png. Oh, had a little too many extensions there. And we can keep iterating through them. And it doesn't look like there's anything different. but Let's take a look at how this looks in its uh, like in its color values right now. So let's just make this as a function. Um, extract frames. Cool. So let's put that away for now. But let's create a um, image kind of. Let's do this for frame zero. Frame zero dot PNG. Okay. Let's create a pixel access object or like access the data of every image in just a data variable right here. And then let's call the, let's actually get 
the contents out of it. So we're going to need the size and like the width and height like of the, the dimensions of the image to begin with. So that should be image dot size. So now we can do a for x in range um, width and do the same thing for y in range of height. So we can print out the data that we're working with at that position, x and y, and let's just do this in the console. I haven't marked ape executable yet, so let's do that. And we get a lot of zeros, as expected, a lot of black. So let's sort these and put them to unique text C. So we have a ton of zeros, but only one eight. So that must be hiding because it looks very, very much like a black pixel, but we know that it's different from all the others. So let's just set that equal to like 255. And then if, well, okay, we got to test for one thing. If that pixel that we're currently looking at is the eight, if it is the outlier, then we'll set that. But if not, we'll just ignore it. So then we can do image.show and now it displays it. You may not be able to see it that clearly, but there is just a pixel, a small, small pixel in the very, very center of the screen. So a white pixel just right there. Now, if we did that with all of the other frames, I wonder what will happen. Um, let's make this go away. I'm just kind of going to do this. Um, with all the files since we have them right now. Kind of be a little bit of a gross hack, but I guess let's just see what they're all saved as, and we can create another GIF if we really wanted to, to see what happens with this. Because um, it's just like one pixel right now, so I want to see if it tries to spell anything out or tries to write anything or do anything crazy. Um, so let's keep track of the frames that we have here. The frame number was like 133, right? So frames, so for i in range, total frames, now we can go ahead and use dollar sign d, or, oh my goodness, I keep doing that, <laughs> percent sign d, and then i will be our iterator, so we get the image original, and then let's create a new image, let's call that image dot new, um, new frame dollar sign d dot png, with our percent specifier and actually that's not the file name that goes in there it's the type so RGB and then it needs the size so in which case we'll use the size from the old image so we can say new data equals image or new dot load okay so we're getting a copied image here so if the current pixel in the original image is the odd lot, like uh, outlier, we can say our new data, we'll set it to a 255. And we don't need to show this anymore, but at the very end of the iteration, we can say um, new.save with the frame, the new frame file name that we've got here. So if I run this, hopefully it won't break. Cool. Now if we ls, we should have a ton of new frames. So I can EOG new frame and hold that down, and you can see I've got a red pixel there, but because it's RGB, I want it to be 255, 255, 255 for white, and then let's run that just to clean those up a little bit. Now I have a white pixel in the very, very center of the screen. So it looks like it's moving here and there. Um, I'm just going to convert all these new frames into a final .gif, kind of a hack with image magic. I know I'm not using real Python there, so I'm sorry. Um, but hopefully we can now just look at final.gif and get an idea as to what this is doing. Because it looks like it's just a white pixel moving up and down. <laughs> and that's really it. It's not really spelling anything for us or doing anything crazy. So, okay. Um, I suppose we can go back to the drawing board. Um, we've got all these frame files, but I don't know if they'll actually help us because they're all just, just boxes with a white pixel in the center, but, oh, hey, it looks like they're just kind of moving, I guess like a joystick would, right? Yeah. So maybe the joystick is trying to spell something out to begin with. 
That must be it. Uh, how do we keep track of... I guess we got to try and figure out how we can keep track of the coordinates that it's doing here for us. Let's, um... Let's kind of remove these for now. And let's just start over here. Let's say the original image equals image.open white.gif. So we'll work with the GIF here and we'll handle all of the frames as we come across them. So image.nframes. Um, so for frame number in image.nframes. Uh, we want to range that here. And let's seek to it. Image.seek frame number. Oh, sorry, that's a function. <laughs> okay. So now we are at the current frame and we can find out the coordinates of that outlier pixel, the one that has eight as its color value, not zero. So not real black, but just hiding kind of gray black. Um, we can do that by, uh, what is the function? What is that function called? Pill image uh, bounding box. Pill bounding box. Get B box. Get B box. Calculates the bounding box of the non zero regions in the image. Okay, so it'll return a four tuple defining the left, upper, right, and lower pixel coordinates. So we could get X and Y, and I guess X2, Y2, if we use image.get B box. Cool. So for each of those frames, what is X and Y. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so they're moving, right? 100, 100 is the center, so that's the start. And it moves to, it moves down, 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 I think. And then to the right a little bit. Because the X and Y is moving. Okay, so just like a joystick. So we just have to follow. We just have to draw the same thing it's drawing. So, hmm. Let's create a cursor for us. Like cursor X, cursor Y. It'll start at the center. So, 100, 100. Yeah. And we actually need a new image for one thing. So new equals image dot new. RGB, and what's the size do we want? It's going to try and... I feel like if, if it's trying to like spell something out, like if it's trying to write something, we're going to need a little bit, little bit more space. So I feel like we're going to have to go like 500 or something. Like a little more 400 is probably fine. But just bigger than the original image, like 200 by 200, I think. I don't know. Okay, so cursor X, cursor Y is going to take the... 100, 100, and then we want to know the difference, right? So x difference equals cursor x minus x, right? Yeah. And cursor y, y difference. So as it moves, we can make these changes to the cursor. I think. That should be right, because as it's moving, x difference is going to be like 0, 0. It's got to be the center. Oh, we probably need a center there, though. Yeah, we need, okay, we just need center. Cursor, cursor we want to keep moving, but center x and center y will be... I mean, it'll be the same as cursor to start with, so I guess we can... And I'm doing that so we'll be able to tell the difference in how the joystick is moving according to the image, and then once we know the, 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 the difference, we will add that to our cursor, and cursor will change. Y difference. So, 
now I guess we can just set a new set an set a pixel at our new image and display it out. We so we got to get a pixel access object for our new. So data equals new dot load and new or I guess data cursor x cursor y can equal a tuple of white 255255. So at the very end of this, we can go new.show. And let's see if we moved along with it. Uh, we drew a line. <laughs> okay. I don't know if that did exactly what I wanted it to do. I think... I think I did have this back... Oh, for one thing, I had Y here, so that's pretty bad. And it should be... The the way we're going to tell the difference is whether or not that white pixel, they're offset from the center. So we have to do the other way around. It should be x minus center x and y minus center y, I think. Oh, okay, cool. Now it's drawn stuff. I think. <laughs> but it's not really all that visible. So it like would stop drawing something when it got back to the center, right? So we can just text we can just test like if if the cursor is or like if the difference we want to know if the difference is zero. So if it haven't if it hasn't moved from the center, so if x difference is equal to zero and y difference is equal to zero then we will update the cursor position to like shift to the right. So cursor x like plus equal 50 or something. So that way it looks like we're moving. Oh, hey! <laughs> okay! It spells out bonus. Uh, okay. Let's, is that it? Is that just all we need? Back to uh, copper.html, we can try bonus.html. Yes! All right, got to level 23, just like that. <laughs> okay, a little tinkering, a little a little playing around with Python, a little ex exploration. Hope you guys uh, had fun with that one. I thought that was pretty awesome. I had a lot of, <laughs> had a lot of code, a little, little experimental code that we were working with kind of at the end, or at least through the beginning, and then what we tinkered with at the end to kind of write out what it was trying to draw with that joystick. So, hey, that was cool. I thought that was really neat. I I am glad I thought back to that get bbox function because that honestly saved a lot. I don't know how we would have really been able to have detected. Um, well, I mean, I know we could have detected. Be like, okay, while we do our loop, if we're determining like, okay, is this if this is the outlier pixel x, you want to know what coordinates at. You can see the x and y values in your loop, but then you'd have to handle them and break out, and that's nonsense. So this image.getbbox is pretty handy and anything really within the Python image library is super handy. I'm, uh, it's That's an awesome weapon and arsenal to have in, in your bag. So, Hey man, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did like the video, hey, please do. like Click the like button. Physically do it. <laughs> that would be awesome. I'm super grateful. Uh, and if you're willing to, subscribe uh, if you haven't already. Uh, if you really want, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video when we jump into Python Challenge level 23. We're just cruising through this stuff. So, thanks again guys. See you later.